Welcome to the Pew. Welcome to the Pew. The somber edition. The somber, somber town edition. <laughs> you know, in general, we joke a lot on our show, but uh, there have been such, uh, so much deep shit going on in the past two weeks that you know we can't really. I mean, it really laugh is, or joke about any of this. It really is a soap opera. I mean, it really it's like a soap opera. Yes, as many of you have seen in the media or on social media, or uh, you probably didn't hear it on the news because I'm sure it wasn't on TV. Um, but, but, but you know, Ke our friend Kiyoki yeah. was arrested, mm -hmm. as was his roommate, because somebody overdosed and died in their apartment. And it turns out that it was an NBC. Well, that's almost irrelevant, though. Like, well, I mean, no, it, because that's what the head. That's why it's getting more attention than it would have been. If it right. Was. I mean, just because there's some kind of tenuous connection to NBC and some of the shows that he worked well, on. It's not tenuous. I mean, he was a producer. Well, so. I mean, he worked there. But he wasn't working there at the time it happened. No. I mean, but what's a producer always a producer? It's like president. But you know, it's like when you work for the media. Like one minute you work for them, the next you're fired. And so it's not like NBC is in you know mourning his death. No, but it makes a good headline. I mean, right. Well, it makes a good headline in the New York Post because yeah. they try to sensationalize it as and NBC. In fact, and know. in fact, the headline was NBC executive found dead with a treasure trove of drugs and cash. And it makes it sound like the, they were his. Right, and that it's all about NBC. Right. But when it had nothing to do with NBC. When it's actually all about <laughs> Um It may have had more to do with XTC than NBC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was a lot of uh, ecstasy. ecstasy. Yeah, there were like a thousand yeah. pills of ecstasy. Is that what the report said? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, hundreds to say yeah. the least. And yeah. then it seemed like there were pounds of crystal meth. Yeah, pounds of crystal meth, pounds of cocaine, um, hundreds of uh, uh, diazepam, whatever kind, I don't know. Um, and, Which is um, what? That's Xanax? Xanax or okay. Clonopin or Valium. Um, so um, we don't know the details of how the guy died. But well, do you? Well, he, he went to sleep and didn't wake up. He died in his sleep. All right. So. And he was doing G. G? Mm -hmm. GHB? Mm -hmm. All right. So. So, he, so we, we're sure he died in GHB. Um, well, no, we don't know. Um, um, well, is that a narcotic? I mean, because I thought it said, the not, article said that he had GHB, narcotics or he died of GHB narcotics. GHB is a, a hormone. Uh, sorry, a steroid. Well, but, obviously. But when taken with, you know, Xanax and, you know, uh, the, because it's a depressant, so um, and it's very easy to G out, you know, go unconscious. Um, you don't normally die from it. You just go out and then you wake up. But uh, it, coupled with, you know, probably alcohol and Xanax and other drugs possibly um you know i mean so uh kiyoki or colby the roommate called the 911 and, and uh the authorities came but Which, they didn't for whatever reason like get you know take the drugs out of the apartment i can't believe that i mean i cannot believe that you call the police with pounds of <clears throat> drugs in the house and then, and the, just think that then there's a dead body, and you just think they're not going to go looking around the apartment. And Kyoki said that Colby was being, you know, sarcastic and flippant with the police officer, saying, you know, is this going to take forever? I've got things to do, and you know, and just antagonizing them. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but uh, well, you do Kyoki, now. Kyoki said mm -hmm. that. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so they're in a lot of trouble. Yes, um, and when they were handcuffed uh, in the car, Kirby said that Colby said that, um, reached his, his head, uh, his face up to the driver and said, um, "All right, what's it going to take to get me out of this?" And the officer said, "I don't mean to bust your bubble, burst your bubble, but you're not going anywhere." It's, um, I don't know. That's. Is, are he you actually, sure? He actually did go somewhere. He, he bailed out. He moved the next day. He and then really. He, and then he was arrested again that night. Oh boy! Because they were tried. The original charges were misdemeanors. And then they, uh, he's not allowed, nobody's allowed back in the apartment. They're still looking, investigating. Right, it's still a crime and scene. they found more drugs, I guess, and then they went back and rearrested Colby. Well, one of the things that was most disturbing about this incident, other than, the, you know, the tragic death of the um, NBC producer or ex-producer, is that I've had all these worries about Kiyoki in recent years. You know, he's been behaving in a way that made me believe that he was in some kind of downward addiction spiral. And this made me think, or this convinced me that he is, or that was, was. the general consensus at Outrage on Monday. Uh, Wayne and Sylvia were there, and you can imagine. The, I didn't even see them there. Uh, they were there early. Oh, okay. I, I think they might may have left before we got there. But um, they, you can imagine the conversation coming out of them. Right. You know what it is, and she, you know, Sylvia likes to look at the larger picture. And um, she 
made a very interesting connection with this situation and Donald Trump's election and um, all kinds of things that she connected in a very depressing way. And she, you know, Sylvia's generally, she's one of the most smartest people I know, and she's generally a very optimistic person. She was not optimistic on Monday. We're gonna take a break. And now a word from our sponsor. To the pew. Welcome back to the pew. The somber edition. So the thing about Kiyoki, I, I was very concerned in recent years about his condition because um, in re especially recently, like in the past few months, sometimes I would see him out and I would try talking to him and he couldn't even have a conversation with Actually, me. Actually, I'm going to disagree with that. I'm going to agree with you up until a, a couple months ago. I think after his last medical incident about a month and a half ago, um, after that I've noticed a, a big change in him. Um, he seems to have cleaned up a lot, and um, maybe not completely, but um, but maybe completely. Um, but he's definitely changed his outlook and his um, his views on drugs and people who use drugs. And in, when I talk to him in prison, from you know from records now, when he calls, he tells me over and over he's done with people who use drugs, and he just can't be around that anymore. It's just ruined his whole life, and he he actually wants to go to rehab when he gets out. Well, I'm grateful to hear that because I really felt that he needed an intervention because certainly in the summertime when I saw him, there were there was this time at, at this party that I went to where he was DJing. It was like four o'clock in the afternoon and I, I walked up to him and tried talking to him and he like wouldn't even look up at me and like acknowledge me. It was like really, he was just so out of it. Like he was in to like the whole That's DJ really thing disturbing. and um, you know, like you couldn't talk to him. Well, you know, when he's in the DJ booth, he, he does that, but that's a little bit But this was a pool party, yeah. wasn't even, I mean, there was almost nobody there, you know? Yeah, I'm, but, I, but I have noticed a, a market improve, you know, and I've also noticed a, 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 a feeling of him not wanting to take anything for granted and um, wanting to enjoy, like we went out for brunch uh, two weeks ago, and he took me to this French cafe, a bistro or whatever, by his house, and um, we had just this really exquisite brunch, and he was savoring every taste and every, you know, talking about every dish that we were having, and and really savoring the moment, and living, you know, living in the moment, and um, and that's something that he never, he hasn't done in a long time, and um, so that was that was refreshing. So as of now, Kiyoki's still in prison or jail. Yes, we we've actually raised the money for um, bail, but it's in PayPal, and the friend. The person who's going to give the money to the bail bondsman is going to be investigated by right. The, Apparently, not anybody can just come up with a suitcase full well, of money. Well, well, yes, to they can, bail, right? but but they want to, but they will be investigated, and which kind of sends a, it's a send, creates a chilling effect for people not want you know people don't want to uh, you know come up with the bail money because of that. But um, we found somebody. We actually found somebody who has a job and who has they pay tax, pay taxes, and everything. So. Um, but she didn't got a job a, and they pay taxes. But she didn't have a PayPal account, so she had to set one up on Thursday. And it takes because she had to set one up just now. It takes three to five business days to get everything, you know. And so um, Monday, tomorrow, she should have that. Well, I don't know when. <laughs> so today, today is January twenty second. So um, you anticipate that he's yeah. going to come out tomorrow or the day after? Well, that's when they're going to get the money in. Um, then they're going to do an investigation to see where the money came from, and if it seems all the up and up, then they'll let him go. Um, they said the investigation could take up to 72 hours. I know. All right, well, more about that next time. Future episodes. <laughs>